Hi everyone, my name is Alexandre Dominikai and in this video I will present our paper entitled Slicing a new GIF representation. This is a joint work with Zakar Najm and Thomas Perrin from NTU Singapore. Some context first, lightweight crypto has been a very hot topic in the past decade. More than a hundred ciphers claiming to be lightweight have been published in the literature and it appears that no single algorithm is more efficient than all others on every possible platforms. It comes from the fact that it is very hard to achieve outstanding performance in both hardware and software at the same time and usually you have to choose a side when designing a cipher. And in our paper, we tried to answer the question how efficient hardware-oriented ciphers can be in software. We believe this is an important question for the ongoing NIST LWC standardization project. We focused on the GIFT family of block ciphers, which was introduced at CHESS 2017 and is composed of two members, namely GIFT64 and GIFT128 where the number refers to the block size. And GIF block ciphers are substitution bit permutation network, which means that the linear layer only consists of a bit permutation. It makes GIF a hardware-oriented design since the linear layer is typically free in hardware. It's just bit wiring, uh, no logic gate is required. GIFT is a direct improvement of the 64-bit cipher prism, which is an ISO standard. It provides smaller area, better resistance against linear cryptanalysis, better performance, and extend to 128-bit block size. Actually, GIFT 128 is used in several NIST LWC Round 2 candidates. Now, let's have a look at uh, the GIFT building blocks. So, both GIFT 64 and GIFT 128 share the same 4-bit S-box. So as you can see, it is quite lightweight. It is composed of only 11 gates and it has nice properties regarding the integration of section countermeasures. It has an algebraic degree of three and only four nonlinear gates. So if both GIFT algorithms share the same F S box, it means that they only differ uh, by the bit permutation. So here is the bit permutation used in GIFT64. Uh, the figure uh, illustrates two rounds of GIFT64. So first we have the nonlinear layer, which consists in uh, parallel application of four bit test boxes. Then the bit permutation and the XOR refer to the addition of the round keys and the round constant. And the bit permutation has the special property that each bit will always arrive at the same position within a 4-bit S-box. So here, for instance, are the S-box first input bits during the first round, and they are still S-box first input bits in the next round, and still in the next round, etc. And this property holds for every bit position, for the first one, the second one, and the third one. So, in fact, the pattern red, yellow, green, blue, red, yellow, green, blue, repeats at each round. So, what does it mean from a software implementation point of view? In this presentation, we only consider constant time implementations, thanks to the, thanks to the bit slice, implementation strategy. And in the case of GIFT, the internal state uh, is composed of four slices since it uses a 4-bit test box. And for GIFT64, uh, each slice is composed of 16 bits. And so this bit permutation property means that each bit located in a slice remains in the same one through the bit permutation. And so different permutations have to be applied to each slice independently. So P0 have to be applied to the slice S0, P1 have to be applied to S1, etc. 
but how do we do concretely? Well, the implementation solution is not very elegant. We have to deal with a lot of mask, shift, and bitwise or. And so these operations are just to apply uh, P0 and F0. Then we have to apply P1 and S1 and P2 and P3. So they can be computed in a similar way using mask, shift, and or. And at the end, the entire linear year requires about 100 cycles per round on ARM Cortex M processors. So this highlights why um, it is usually believed that ciphers using bit permutations are bad candidate for software implementations, although they are extremely efficient in hardware. Um, so still, in the case of gifts, one can uh, take advantage of some large uh, architecture like by processing two blocks on 32-bit platforms, for instance. So we did some uh, knife bit size implementation to have an idea on how GIFT performs in software. So here are constant time implementation results on ARM Cortex M3 and M4. So as I just said, for GIFT64, we took advantage of the 32-bit architecture to process two blocks in parallel. Uh, for GIFT128, it perfectly fits 32-bit register, so we just process one block at a time. And the speed is expressed in cycles per block. Um, and so finally, we have the GIFT block ciphers that run at 268 and 540 cycles per byte. And in order to give some insight on how it compares uh, when compared to other uh, ciphers, AES128 runs at 100 cycles per byte on the same platform. So clearly, GIFT is not uh, a perfect candidate for optimized software implementation on microcontroller. And this is mainly due to the bit permutation, which is very costly. So let's have a look at this building block, see if we can arrange that. So here is the bit slice representation of GIF64. So we have um, we have the four slices. Um, each bit within a slice, well, sorry, each cell within a slice referred to a bit. And so then during the first round we will apply uh, the linear layer. So each slice will be transformed independently using P1, P2, P3, and same during the second round, third round, and fourth one. And one can remark that after four rounds, we have like a synchronization uh, of the slices. So after four rounds, the bits are back at their original position within the slices. So it means that the permutation order is four. And it let us think that following an alternative representation for a few rounds, namely four, might help to improve the performance. Actually, the decomposition of the present permutation over two rounds allows significant performance improvements for this algorithm. And in the case of GIFT, we asked ourselves, what if we just completely omit the permutation for a given slice, since it will be back to the original position after four rounds anyway. So that's what, it, that's what we did. We had a look at it. So once again, the bit slice representation of the internal state. And during the first round, instead of applying P0 to S0, uh, so this slice will remain fixed during the entire algorithm. And so we cannot just apply P1, P2, and P3 to the other slices because uh, we need the bits to be properly aligned for the S-box to be computed. So by properly aligned, I mean, if I go back to the classical representation, so for instance, in the second round, we have the bit 0, 5, 
10, and 15. And so those four bits will be involved in a SBUS computation. And so we want the same bits to be involved in the SBUS computation in our alternative representation. Otherwise, the result will be erroneous. So we just, instead of applying P1, P2, P3, we adjust the slices according to our fixed one so that the bits are properly aligned for the SBOX. And actually, this can be done in a very simple way. For the first round, we just have to rotate uh, columns of the slices. So for the first slice, we just rotate one column to the left, two to the left for the second, three to the left for the third. And for the second round, we don't have to rotate columns but rows. For the third round, we have to rotate columns back, but uh, to the right this time. And for the fourth round, we have to uh, rotate rows again, but to the bottom. And then after four rounds, uh, once again, we have classical, uh, sorry, we have a resynchronization with the classical representation. So to put it in a nutshell, our new representation consists in fixing a slide to never move and to adjust the others accordingly so that the bits are correctly aligned for the S-box. We call our technique fix slicing. For GIF64, the slices adjustment are uh, very simple and consist of row-wise and column-wise rotations, depending on the round numbers. By processing two blocks at a time on 32-bit architectures, they can be computed by means of worldwide and byte-wide rotations, respectively. And since worldwide rotations can be computed for free on ARM thanks to the inline variable shifter, it means that the linear layer is free every two rounds on those processors, which is quite an improvement compared to the naive bit sliced uh, version. And so what about GIFT 128? So it's more tricky in this case because we don't have uh, the permutation order is not four anymore. Actually, the permutation order is 31 for P0 and P2, 10 for P1, and five for P3. And we are interested in the lowest uh, order since it allows to define a more compact alternate, alternative representation. So we suggest to fix F3 to never move, so we can define an alternative representation that will be synchronized with the classical one after five rounds. And the slices adjustments are similar to GIF64 for the first two rounds, so we just have to compute word-wise and byte-wise rotations, but are slightly more costly for the last three rounds, uh, but still they are uh, way more efficient than the naive uh, version. So we do not detail uh, the slices adjustment in uh, this presentation, but uh, if you're interested, you can have a look at the paper. They are, this is well detailed. And so here are our implementation results for the fixed slice implementation. Um, so all, uh, so our gift implementation were written in assembly uh, to reach the best performance. And these implementation results uh, are for fully enrolled implementation, still for uh, speed optimization. And um, so the gift B algorithm here refers to gift, but uh, expecting um, the data to arrive in the correct form. Uh, I mean, it, expect the data to be already in a bit sliced form. So we don't spend uh, cycles at the beginning of the cipher to pack the input data and at the end to unpack the out output data. So this is just a matter of representation. It does not affect the security of the algorithm. And actually it was used by, by some uh, NIST LWC candidates. And so thanks to fixed slicing, we see that there is quite an improvement. Uh, 
GIF64 is only outperformed by uh, Spec, which is known for its outstanding performance thanks to its art structure. And now we have GIFT128 that outperforms AES uh, on microcontrollers. So fixed-lighting allows uh, significant performance improvement uh, when compared to night bit slicing. For instance, we see that GIFT runs five times faster and GIFT128 six times faster on ARM Cortex M. Um, our fixed size representation perfectly fits the ARM architecture thanks to the inline bar shifter. And we expect slightly lower but still impressive improvement factors on platforms without coded instructions, such as RISC-V. We also had a look uh, into masking implementations. So actually, there, there were no results for uh, masked GIFT in software. So we filled the gap by integrating first order masking. Uh, indeed, lightweight cryptography, ag cryptographic algorithms should be able to integrate um, such and countermeasures at a reasonable cost since embedded devices are typical targets for post-session attacks. And so for our masking scheme, we used uh, uh, no nonlinear gates that do not require additional randomness generation. We used the scheme uh, published by Burikov and Al at Cardiff 2017. And we can see that uh, the gap with the IS is even more important in the masked domain. Uh, still, one has to note that uh, AES, I mean, this AES implementation uh, uses uh, nonlinear gates that requires additional um, randomness generation. So, the, these results can probably be improved and the gap with GIFT uh, can be reduced, but we still expect GIFT to show uh, outstanding performance over the AIS in the massive domain. And we also had a look uh, into the benefits of fixed slicing in the context of the NIST LWC standardization project. So by integrating our fixed light GIF implementation into the GIF CUFB authenticated cipher, and we compare it to ASCON, which is uh, part of the CSER portfolio, another NIST LWC algorithm, and is actually one, on, one of the fastest in, in software. And actually, we see that GIF CUFB is uh, competing with ASCON, not as fast, but not uh, really far from him. And actually, by looking at the NIST LWC benchmark, uh, GIFCFB ranks among the top five on most of the microcontrollers. So this is quite uh, an improvement. So to conclude, we introduced a new alternative representation of, of GIFT that we call fixed slicing. It allows a constant time and software friendly uh, implementation of the bit permutation. It makes GIFT extremely efficient in software placing GIF CUFB among the fastest NIST LWC run to candidates on microcontrollers. And we highlighted that GIFT is well suited to session countermeasures by reporting uh, first order masked results. And all our implementations are publicly available uh, online. So you can have a look if you want to run benchmark uh, also, we did not challenge the security of our masked uh, GIFT implementation. So if you are interested in, please feel free to, to contribute. And some perspective regarding the fixed slicing implementation strategy. Actually, it tends to be generic and it might be of interest for other designs and not only uh, substitution bit permutation networks. Indeed, we applied it to the AES and it led to new bit slice speed records on ARM Cortex M processors and RISC-V. 
So if you're interested in the paper will soon appear on ePrint and we will also soon make the source code available on GitHub so you can have a check if you're interested. Okay, thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this talk and if you have any question, please feel free to reach us by, by email. We'll be, by email we, we will be happy to answer your question. Thank you, bye-bye.